Salinista, recognizes that historical right. And that historical recognition is expressed not only in recognizing that we can talk our language and that we can uh, live in our own culture, but also in the demarcation of language. Uh, Salinista Revolution has recognized the right of indigenous and Afro-descendant population to at least 33,000 square kilometers of communal property. This is a country of 151,000 square, 134,000 square kilometers. I was including a piece of Honduras, which was ours. <laughs> uh, uh, 134,000 square kilometers, 132,000 square kilometers. And out of that, at least one third, 33,000, are in the hands of indigenous and Afro-descendant population under the logic of communal land. If that's not a revolution in itself, and that is the reason why uh, a lot of the uh, Creole population is uh, in, 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 in strong support of, 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 of the settlement. Of course, we speak English. We talk English. We don't speak English. We talk English. And that talking in English is a is, a, is, a, is an element of ideological um, penetration, of course, the church, the this, the that, the other. But in spite of that, uh, I think we, we, we have a saying, uh, the revolution and the Caribbean force. Autonomy is the revolution. So we were able then, uh, by, by 1890, 1989, 1987, 88, 89, to have a constitutional amendment to recognize the autonomous region of the Caribbean. And that's where the story comes from. But it doesn't come from that. It comes from back in the 1850s, uh, where we started to build our own social, economic, and political uh, society, our entity. Uh, and that is one of the... That, if you want to have an analogy, that it would be something like Belize. Although Belize was still a protectorate up until 18, 1981, um, the Caribbean coast of Nicaragua um, got rid of the protectorate status. And the revolution of Celaya, which I spoke uh, relatively highly about in 1893, is also the intervention over our own political. So, that is where we started to, to become uh, part of the Nicaraguan state. Not Nicaraguans, part of the Nicaraguan state. Now we are all Nicaraguans because we all belong to the state, but we are Nicaraguans, each one in its own recognition of its cultural, historical, and political identity. And I think uh, that autonomous process, which now have nearly like 30 something years, has not been also recognized throughout uh, the region as, a, as, as how it, as recognized in its importance. You're from Nicaragua? Well, you're supposed to speak Spanish. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to be a mestizo descending from one of the plateau of Mexico. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to be Roman Catholic, mm -hmm. right? There is all these supposing mm -hmm. that I am not, mm -hmm. right? I talk English home, that's my first language. I not descend from none of the, I descend from African, but I also descend from Southern indigenous, mm -hmm. uh, autochthonous cultures. I raised and grew up in the Anglican church, of course, the British colony. So uh, I would say I'm Protestant, I'm not Roman Catholic. And uh, uh, I look forward to the recognition of my history and my rights. And that recognition of history and right. Yeah. So as I said, when people say Nicaraguan, they're expecting Juan Perez or Maria Lopez or whatever, that assumption doesn't exist here. And I think that's, that's a particularity. As I said, the importance of Sandino, I said a while ago, I think the importance of recognizing that Nicaragua is not one, not, not monoculture or, or, or single, yeah, single history. We have an history. And in the Caribbean, we have a long history of also struggle. Struggle against the colonial forces, which was the British. Struggle against the Nicaraguan uh, forces, because it's natural resources. That is where the natural resources is. And the greed of the oligarchy to take over that area of the country 
is it? And just plain racism, just plain blunt, blunt, stupid racism. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not only racism, it's, 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 um, it's racism, it's xenophobia, and it's, it's, it's nationalism. It's like if you are, if you don't, if you don't belong to this, you are foreign. You know? And we had to grow up with that. And it is only the revolution that brings all of that to the table, recognizes it, and puts it on. The, the relationship with, with Caribbean, Caribbean population, indigenous and Afro-descendant, right? That's how we, we say, indigenous and Afro-descendant. Yeah, we get politically correct. Indigenous and black. Anyway, the, the footing of that is in the historical program of the Sandinista Front in the, in the 60s that Carlos Fonseca led. It's writing. The footing of it is there. Um, he speaks about recognizing the rights of indigenous and Afro descendants. But the implementation of the policy is Daniel Ortega. And I say, not the entire front. Daniel Ortega was ahead. Of, of the party in terms of that recognition because people are pragmatic. If I am going to build something, I am going to build it where I have more people because I am thinking politically. But building it where I think it's right and where it is, it has to do with, with restitution of rights notwithstanding the size of its political impact, that takes a farther thing, yes, and that's Daniel Ortega, a farther vision of understanding. So for example, we are building, to, uh, you know, I, I, I generally have a problem with relating uh, rights and things, you know, but we are building right now one of the largest hospitals in the entire Caribbean, Western Caribbean basin, from Belize to Panama, in in the north, in the northern um, autonomous region, um, in Bilui, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to be, I think, a 150 bed hospital, etc. Now, demographically speaking, there are fewer population that are going to use that hospital than if you put it in a major populated area mm -hmm. on the Pacific or anywhere mm -hmm. who don't have it. But it takes you. A long time to get from from there to Managua than what it takes you from any other other. It takes you the farthest place in Nicaragua by road is four hours. Bill, now when we finish the hospital, the the, the, the road, right. it's going to be um, eight hours probably. From here. But now today it takes you like twelve hours, etc. Between what we already built and what needs to be built. So that understanding of but also the understanding that okay, President Ortega says, says it this way. They were here before us. Mm -hmm. So why should we you know, uh, have more rights than the indigenous people? It's like the discussion of, of the, 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 the land, uh, the titling of land. Some people wanted to just give the indigenous Eric, uh, a general recognition mm -hmm. but they get real real title now the title is communal mm -hmm. but they can do whatever they want as long as the community get together and do good land and we're talking about one third of the country mm -hmm. that is unthinkable mm -hmm. in any country in this world that a national government decides to relinquish the rights that's why i talk about the autonomous land no country in the world, the ethnic majority decide, deciding to take 30% of its territory, right? And recognizing that less than 10% of the country has the right to that land. No, and not only the, the, the bad land that they ended up allowing them in reserves. Right. I mean, talking the best land, because what is on the Caribbean in this country is the most endowed region of the country in terms of natural resources. The amount of water, the amount of land, the amount of forest boils down to who decides. Who's, and then not only who decides, who sits around the table 
of the decision making. And that is where having more people looking like me, I like my indigenous brothers and sisters sitting around the table is important for the decision making. And that, that understanding is not necessarily across the board. It is President Ortega who, who have that. And that is, that is really, we recognize that. Afro-Caribbean in Nicaragua, do they have the same health and educational and uh, uh, economic outcomes? Yes, okay. yes. So, so you have the same infant mortality, the same it has, uh, neonatal yes, mentality? Because in the last 15 years, yeah. when we came to government in 2007, right. the largest uh, maternal mortality index mm -hmm. was in the Southern Caribbean region. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maternal mortality uh, was in its 600s, I think, mm -hmm. which is heedless. Ah. There were two decisions of hospitals taken in 2007 when we came to one. Again, against the demographic debaters. Mm -hmm. Demographic policy debaters would always say that you put the issues where you have more population. Mm -hmm. The rights debaters say you put it where it recognizes and it's more needed. Right. Why? Because of communication. Right. Again, it took a woman up in that mountain right. three days to get from where she lived to a hospital in Bluefields when it takes a woman anywhere on the Pacific two hours. The, the rights discussion and the right debate and the rights narrative right. only talks about rights, yeah. but it doesn't talk about actual improving how, the how condition. They how to improve the condition. Yeah, what they the progress debate is uh, we only do progress but to help with the rights. Yeah. And you, you have to, you follow? Mm -hmm. yeah. You have to be able to put them together. Yeah. To and that is what President Ortega has done. Mm -hmm. So. The level of public investment mm -hmm. toward the Caribbean coast mm -hmm. is disproportional to the rest of the country. Mm -hmm. And they start telling you about democracy, and they start telling you about election, and they start telling you about a bunch of things that is their cosmovision. Mm -hmm. But nobody tells you about the 60, 70 hospitals, facilities. health course, facilities, facilities that we that we have been able. This country has the best roads yeah. in the entire region. And I was I would argue more than in Washington DC. We have better roads than in Washington DC. And you ask people, there is nothing more dignifying than a road. Yeah. But a road is everything. Yeah. Is health. Is access, mm -hmm. is inclusion, is everything. So when you hear we, we, we our major fight um, that we have done is building those two, three roads to the Caribbean coast. This country intervened the Caribbean coast in 1894 and annexed it to the country. They didn't use the word before. Mm -hmm. And annexed it to the country in 1894. And it's until now that we have a road to the major city. Yeah. Up until three years ago, you either had to take a boat or an airplane to get to the capital of the Caribbean coast. Mm -hmm. You didn't have a road linking it. Mm -hmm. That's the size of the exclusion. So, and with the road is the electricity. And with the electricity is the health facility. And with the health facility is the education. And at the base of it is the productive inclusion. Because I could produce something there, but I never had who to sell it to. So that is, that's what revolution is in our head. In our, in our, in our experience. Not all of that. Um, um, the, for the, the, the vice president called it Izquierda uh, de Café. Mm -hmm. A coffee shop coffee left. Yeah. We'll sit in a coffee shop mm -hmm. and talk. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. We're doing it. Transforming people's life. Yeah.
So at the end of the day, happens what happens. When you sit and that's the side of progress. That's the side of progress. That is the important side of, of as I say, it's a it's a it's a two things, huh? Progress and rights. And you've got to have both of them in some way. Yeah. 